Thank you for listening to Pow Block Podcast, the flagship Nintendo podcast of Boss Rush Network. Do you need even more gaming and entertainment in your life? Head over to BossRush.net where you can find news, reviews, creators, podcasts, and more focused around the content you enjoy. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Nintendo Pop Like here on Boss Rush Network. We are in the building. I'm your host, the Enlightened and Excited Eddie V. So glad to be back with you guys. Joining me, of course, is Bossman himself, Mr. Corey Derrick. Hello. I'm here. I'm alive. I am. I'm here, Ed. It's it's been a it's been a crazy weekend, but you know it's uh you know it's Memorial Day weekend. We kind of gave everybody the week this episode off but then we decided we probably shouldn't miss an episode so here we are yes it's uh, fine it's okay speaking of having a crazy week uh so my manager uh store manager caught got covid somehow mm. so that put me as like the store manager while she's gone because the, the other shift lead, you know, has to attend to her daughter in case anything happens. So I literally got my schedule switched and pretty much had to run run the store on top of running someone else's store <laughs> Saturday. Um, so we don't know. Well, another thing, uh, that store manager is also going to another store. Like getting transferred, so we're getting a new store manager. So, but we don't know who the person is just yet. So we will see uh, who it is. But that, but right now, till well, I think she'll be back tomorrow. But for now, I kind of been in charge of the store, so oh. I've been having to making decisions and stuff like that. And just like, oh, Ed's making okay. decisions, everybody. <laughs> Watch out. So, uh, well, people were speaking. It's, some people were trying to speak into existence. That I get my own store. Hmm. That I become the store manager, and I was just like, I, I was just like, I'm not ready for that yet. <laughs> I, I mean, I I could be ready. I'm like, just I would need to be get a little bit more training, get used to doing things. But I'm like, I think if I do most of like the office and like managerial uh, at well administration stuff. Mm-hmm. That a store manager does. If I get used to that, then I would know the flow of it. Uh, but yeah, it's it's been a wild week and not too wild of a weekend. It was just very um, going to another store. Uh, this is my second store within a week, I should say, that I had to work at. But. Uh, yeah, it's it's kind of just been interesting how things are moving, and June is just going to be a whirlwind of craziness. <laughs> let's just say. Hmm. Well, but. it's fine. It's all fine. We're here. Yes, you know, we're, we're here, here doing power block, our Monday night ritual. It's yes. Fine. Uh, Ed. Ed. Yes. How 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 is everything else going? Um, just making sure you're all right, Ed. You sound tired. You sound like <laughs> you, uh, you sound like you should have probably taken a nap at some point today. And actually, you I did take. A, oh, actually, I did take a, take a nap. Uh, you know, sometimes when you wake up from a good nap, you still feel groggy and like, uh, what what what's going on? Uh, kind of feeling like that. But I'm actually excited. Uh, got my got in my energy, you know, going. Um, trying to stay cool because it was hot today. Surprisingly, I'm like, ooh, this, this it's a hot time today. <laughs> but other than that, I've I've been good. I've been, you know, just focusing those things that work, making sure that things are right, so that when uh, my store manager comes back, I would have, you know she see that I made an effort to do what needed to be done at work, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, other than that, yeah, I'm, I'm good. 
Um, got to actually start playing Xbox today oh. in a weird way. Um, and the reason why I said that, because I haven't been playing my Series X for a while because of focusing on a lot of stuff uh, with Nintendo. Mm-hmm. Um, getting some games and stuff done, which I'll talk about in playing with power and everything. And I, since I missed last episode, um, I still, you know, had some thoughts about some games that I picked up for the Switch um, that I completed. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I, I've i been good. Um, I, I know for Doc Mo, we're, we're going to have a, I think, a serious conversation because I think it's worth having. Um, but other than that, I've been really good. Really, really excited. Uh, looking forward to vacation in August and September. I should say, <laughs> trust nice. me. Nice, nice. Oh, yeah, it's uh, it's, yeah, <laughs> I don't know what else to say now. Um, well, Ed, since we're here, since since we are here recording this episode on this very warm May evening. We have some patrons to shout out. Yes. So, uh, remember, all of our content is free. But if you head over to patreon.com slash network, you can support us and our friends for just a dollar a month. And you get Nintendo Power Block Expansion Pass, the Boss Rush Podcast one week early, as well as After Dark and Standard Definition two weeks early. Uh, that includes a series that Ed and I are doing, Ranking Nintendo, where we rank all of Nintendo's consoles. And, uh, you know, it's it's a good time. I think the Game Boy episode just released on free feeds today. Yes. So uh, go check that out. We need to get another one of those on the books. We need to make sure Stephanie uh, is available because she joined us on the Game Boy one, and I feel like everybody likes it when she's on something. So we need to get her back on. For Super Nintendo, and then Nintendo 64, and so on and so forth. So, uh, yes. But at the $5 level, Ed, you become a Patreon producer. What does that mean, Ed? It means you get your name shouted out on this here program. So, without further ado, our Patreon producers for this episode are Quentin Jackson, Rebecca Jewell, Adriel Munger, and my wife, Sana Dierig. So I want to thank all of our patrons. I want to thank all of our free listeners as well. You know, we, Ed and I have been doing this show in particular for a very long time. And yes, you know, it's uh, because of the amount of people who listen to the show that we keep going and enjoy doing what we're doing. And so just thank you. Thank you, everybody. Yes. Well, everybody, we're going to get into Snack Tendo. And... This one might be a little bit short because, uh, Corey, I had a toasted cheddar chalupa from Taco Bell. What? Yeah, so it's uh, it's the the shell that's that they use the breading that they use for the chalupa. I'm well aware had... of what a chalupa is. I didn't get this size by not understanding what a chalupa is. <laughs> well, I know that, but I was describing with describing how it's designed and stuff with the cheddar be on the outside and it being a little crunchy. Um, it was fine. It was good. I I thought I would get more of a uh, nice cheddar taste because sometimes cheddar is really strong um, when I eat it, and this one didn't taste strong for some reason. I'm like, hmm, this, that's weird. I taste the cheese that they use, but like I thought the cheddar would be a little bit strong. It wasn't bad or anything. It was just it was good. I think I need to try that with chicken, hmm. in a sense, because I did it with just like their regular meat you want to call it that right um but yeah i i i had uh some triple fush chocolate oreos which were good um i had flaming hot limon uh cheetos which was really good and um dill pickle lays which was also good uh, and uh, I don't know if I talked about this, but I've been drinking smart water. Um, and they kind of got this like berry flavor. Um, it, it, like it's a it's a different kind of smart water. 
um, than their regular flavor ones. Uh, and it's so good. I, I, I had to buy two bottles because it's nice and cold in our freezer at work. Um, because like if I drink, if I get one bottle, I'm going to drink most of it like in one gulp. Because mm-hmm. it's so good. Smooth aftertaste, just refreshing. And I know a lot of people have been wondering, uh, Ed, do you drink water and stuff? And I really don't like water as like that. Um, but uh tasting that's, that that's not one. human, guys. Remember, Ed has the ironclad stomach of like a garbage disposal. No. And uh <laughs> I'm just kidding, Ed. I'm just messing with you. But yeah, the smart water was really good. Uh, yeah, and that's pretty much all, all the stuff that I've been stacking on. I just seen that there is a banana caramel Cheerios, so I'm probably going to go to Target tomorrow and pick some up. Hopefully, they got some and give that one a try because that sounds so good. I love banana and I love caramel, and that just seems like the great combination for Cheerios. Of course, I still love my Honey Nut Cheerios. Like, no one's going to take that away at all. Hmm. Okay. That's uh, an interesting... Uh... Oh, I did have, and I'm going to get yelled at this. I'm sure. Where are you <laughs> um, not getting yelled at? I had... Uh, so, Friday, I had... Uh, we got a place called Quan Sets, and they do thin crust pizza. Um, some of the best is it's like a home restaurant, friendly restaurant kind of home store. Um, uh, and it was kind of packed because people, some of the older folks were going to enter the bar. But I was, I got their, uh, got like a small and got their cheese, sausage, and mushroom pizza. Mm. Really, really good. And then Saturday, there's a place called Rosati's that they had the deep dish pizza. And I only got just like, sausage on it uh, and you know they had the the pizza topping the um the tomato topping on top of it with she with uh and, and stuff uh and i got a small on there and it was really good too i couldn't go i couldn't leave the store or anything so i was just like let me just get this deep dish pizza um and it yeah it was good hmm. so that's what i've been uh that was my weekend of snacking Nice. Of course, it's, it's sushi. Nice. Nice. Uh, well, Ed, I had, I finally went back to Casa del Rio this weekend. Yes. Had my giant burrito. I didn't send a picture to you, but I don't care. It was the most perfect burrito I've ever had <laughs> in my life. Uh, so I, <laughs> I devoured that. Let me tell you, man, I love the chorizo chicken which is like this kind of like spicier chicken. Mm -hmm. I got the grilled onions and jalapenos. I got Mm -hmm. the Mexican rice and I got black beans and I got extra cheese and extra habanero salsa. Mm. Mm. Hot. I loved it. So good. I love, so for a long time, I thought my favorite food was pizza. Yeah, for so long, and somewhere in the last couple of years, it's transitioned to burritos, burritos, like a good burrito, and I just, I I gotta tell you, man, I could I could have eaten like four of these things, and yeah, I mean I've I've shown you how big they are, oh and, yeah, and like I'm full after one, but like after I eat it, I want more, and I could mm. I would like stuff myself full with one or two more at least afterwards <laughs> uh, oh man they're so good so uh, can I ask you a question no. how do you deal with the spiciness what do you mean because it, it, it seems that you are a person who can handle spicy food I, I like I spicy can. I love spicy food I love if that's um, it's I mean there's a limit for sure Right. Like, yes. You know, when you go to wing places and you have to sign a waiver to eat these special wings, I'm not doing that. I'm not not doing that. But I like I like a good kick to my spice or to my food, you know, and it's just something I like to do. I just like a good spicy food. Because it seems like your your stomach is able to handle it. Like and 
it looks like you don't have you probably won't get watery eyes or your mouth running with snot or anything or you need to because i need to drink a lot of water or something when i eat spicy food because i can't handle spicy food i mean a lot I of think people, I, a lot of people do but let me tell you that the thing to to drink uh with spicy food is not water it's milk and I know that sounds weird and it sounds really gross, but that's that's the that's what you're supposed to drink is milk. Because you... it, it like isolates the the oils from the spice in mm-hmm. water, like it'll mix with the water and make it worse, actually. You know what I always thought uh pop would do that. Pop is just like pop do not drink pop when you're drinking eating spicy food. Oh my gosh, dude, that pop acid, is what makes it so much better. But it makes it so hot. It's like the acid I'm, of the, of the I'm pop. I'm aware. It just, oh, it's so good, though. <laughs> See, you're able to handle spicy food, and I can't. I can't do it. But I will. I love a good burrito. Trust me. Our, our plan is to go there. If I need to get you two of them, I will get you two of them, and I will get one that's mild. That is, a, uh, do they do like chicken burritos or the same thing? I mean, um, what do you mean chicken? Bur- like, I mean, you don't have to get spicy. You can make it as mild as you want. It's just I like to add the spicy stuff. They have like grilled chicken and shredded chicken. The shredded mm-hmm. chicken is actually really good because it's cooked with green peppers and onions. Yeah. And so, like, that's if you don't want something spicy, that's actually really good too. But I got to have spice. So I will find it. Sometimes I get habanero and Diablo salsa. But, well, Diablo is like their medium and habaneros, they're hot. So I just asked for extra habanero this time and it was delicious. I have uh, Domino's does the mango habanero chicken ones Mm -hmm. uh which i get i i do enjoy that one uh because it's just like i think the mango the sweetness of it kind of handles i mean it's still spicy but it's not that spicy Mm -hmm. or anything and so i didn't know if they also uh offer that because i think however never kind of has become like popular maybe last two years or shit or something for a while because not a lot of people talk about that Habanero. I mean, it's like I I really don't know. I just like it because it's hot. I don't really. Mm. I'm not like in the food scene, you know. I'm not like checking out the latest, uh, you know. But it's fine. It's it's falling apart back there. Oh, sorry, everybody. You all right there, Ed? You all right? Yeah. You good. I'm good. I had to grab my book bag for something. Mm. Uh, okay. Okay. Any anything else? I kind of want to. Check out some ice cream stuff. That's what I'm looking forward to. Uh, I mean, we had we did the typical Memorial Day stuff where we had hamburgers and hot dogs and sausages and stuff. But um, other than that, I didn't. We had a really terrible meal from uh, BJ Steakhouse. <laughs> oh no! It, this place is supposed to be like fancy and expensive and whatever. I mean, not like mm-hmm. fancy, fancy, but like. It's like on Upper a level. Class. It's on a level where like their salads are like sixteen and seventeen dollars. Ooh, the lies. And their and their pizzas are like thirty to forty dollars. <laughs> so I mean, you know what I mean. So it's like that kind yeah. of level of whatever. Dude, it was seriously. My wife and I both agreed. It was it was seriously like one of the worst meals we've ever had. Like was it, was that your first time there? Yeah, it's the first and only time there. Well, my we got a gift card there and. We were like, well, it's expensive, but whatever. We ended up like not even finishing our dinner and just cooking something else. Oh wow! Which, by the way, good soft pretzel with cheese. Mm, I could eat that all day. I know. I heard you talking about it on last episode, yeah. and I was just like, yeah. Oh. Because uh, well, that's what we had instead. We ended up throwing some of those in the oven, and <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, they're so good. Uh, so good. Uh, when Stephanie said like Aunt Annie's, I'm like, yeah. I I try to get a pretzel without the salt on them, but sometimes I can't. Uh, or I'll do the soft pretzel nuggets, 
when I go to the train station, like leaving Chicago, coming home, I'll probably get I'll probably get that. But yeah, you write a good soft press, dude. It's just it, it really hits the spot. Mm-hmm. And I was wondering, I'm just like, hold on, wait. Where did you get? Where did I'm like? Do they sell those in grocery stores? Mm-hmm. Like the soft press? They're in the ones? freezer. They're in the freezer aisle. They're in the freezer aisle, <laughs> and then. Like, sometimes they come with cheese. Not recommended. I'd go down the salsa and cheese aisle and pick out whatever kind of cheese. I like the queso mm-hmm. blanco with my pretzels. Also... The uh, tostitos? Yeah. Well, I mean, whatever, yeah. Oh, I also recommend yeah. a good beer cheese if you can find one, although that's sometimes that's kind of expensive. So just, like, you know. If if I'm in Wisconsin uh, grocery stores, they have them mostly there with the beer cheese Yeah. Uh, for it. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it, I guess. Uh, nothing else really to report on the food side, but I did, <laughs> I did go to the doctor and this weekend I kind of just treated it as like a last hurrah kind of thing because mm-hmm. I do need to lose a lot of weight and, uh, you can, we talked a little bit about it on after dark, uh, which is coming out in a week or two, I think. So, uh, if you want to hear me rant about that, but I was just kind of using this weekend as like a last hurrah and like starting tomorrow, I'm going to like, re- like, I mean, I've been dieting a little bit, but then there's been like, you know, those days that you just can't avoid food. And then obviously like a weekend is like a, a holiday weekend. There's going to be all kinds of crappy food around. So, yeah. uh, that's kind of it. I got something weird on my face. Why isn't that coming off? That's weird. I don't know. Oh, uh-huh. It's a white hair. Great. Uh, so, you know, I've I've got a little bit of a plan to, like, exercise a little bit and eat better. But, Ed, my knee is really hurting. I have a, I have a sleeve on it right now to support it. And, uh-huh. like, the only time it doesn't hurt is when I'm standing up and walking around. <laughs> That's like the only time it doesn't hurt, but it does give out a little bit sometimes. And like, I can't put any pressure on it to get up or whatever. It's just uh-huh. a really strange feeling. But is it feel like that? Is oh. it feel like sometimes when you walk in, like you kind of dip because yeah, it gives out for a bit? A little bit. But Ed, speaking of that, Galatrad has inspired me. And I wish he was here to let me tell him, but I told him we, we weren't recording an episode on monday night so uh but i did get ring fit Yay! so I, that my journey with that begins tomorrow he has inspired me and i see him posting stuff like how much you know how many calories he's burned whatever and uh i'm gonna start kind of exercising in the morning before work and i'm gonna do what galatrad does and see if it works because he says he feels better mentally and physically and Mm-hmm. I have not felt that great <laughs> in that category recently. So, uh, uh, Wes, um, from uh, oh, console yeah, gaming crew, yeah, console gaming crew, he was streaming his uh, weight journey with uh, f- uh Ring Fit. Yeah, everything. I saw that. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm not, proud of I'm not gonna go that far. It's a cool. It's a cool idea. I'm not gonna go that far, and I. But I. I like what Wes is doing as well. So yeah, console gaming yeah. crew, go check them out. Yeah, good. Good guys over there at console um, crew. Yes, um, there are some. Uh, before we move on, like when uh we fit now is it we fit yeah when we fit came out, some people were doing that game as like well I'm gonna spend three months with this game. Uh, and see what the result results are, and you know people were committed to see if that if we fit was working. And to some people, they lost a lot of weight. You know, they changed their eating habits. Um, they did some extra. Uh, they did extra exercise outside of we fit, but they was committed to the gay. Um, and they showed their ninety day progress. So uh, I believe in you, Corp Boss. I believe that. Uh, you're gonna do great on this journey. Uh, you know, I already know that you could text me and just be like, "Ed, I just finished my uh, my first journey or my first day with We Fit. I mean, with uh, Ring Fit Adventure." 
Yeah, um, I'm gonna document it. Probably it'll probably be like a Twitter and Instagram thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, to document it, uh, I'm not gonna let. I, and maybe I'll do a little like once we kind of get through uh, a couple things in episode 300, I, I might have a little segment on this show to kind of say how I'm going through uh, and and doing. But yeah, I mean, I'm excited to to do it, <laughs> and we'll see what happens. I guess. It's it's so surprising that that game is still selling and doing it's numbers. So, it's sold like 15 million units or something crazy. Well, yeah. definitely the, during the pandemic, it's so just like out of control. Yeah. No, it's it's insane. So, uh, yeah, it's I'm I'm excited to try it and do it and do all the things and figure it out. Hey. So, yeah. Yes. Well, everybody, it's time for Femi News. Corey, take it away. Uh, is it that time already? Oh, geez. Yes. Okay, so we have a couple stories here. Uh, the first story comes from, from Game Informer, uh, one of my favorite games of all time, my favorite series of all time, uh, is coming to Switch, but with a, with a cool catch here, Ed. So... Uh, as we all know, Star Wars Celebrations was this past weekend. I enjoyed it immensely. I've been watching Obi Wan, and uh, I I think that show is great. It started out a little slow, and I was like, kind of like, you no, know, the first half hour, of the first episode is real slow, and there's mm-hmm. some editing choices that I'm like, what? Okay, but the uh, like the second half of the first episode and the second episode were great, so I'm like out of that, whatever. Did they say um, how many episodes for that? It's six. For that? Six episodes. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, but what came out on the last day of Star Wars Celebration, Ed, is uh, Aspire, or not the well, what last day was yesterday, right? Yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Aspire, who's been porting all of the Star Wars games over to Switch and other uh, consoles, as well as the team who's remaking uh, Knights of the Old Republic. Announced that they're bringing Knights of the Old Republic 2 to Nintendo Switch on June 8th, which is great. But the cool thing, Ed, uh, the cool thing about this version is that, uh, for those who don't know, this game was developed in nine months uh, because LucasArts wanted this game out the door to kind of uh, uh, play off the success of the first game. Obviously, Bioware had a lot of time. You know, I think they developed in in like two or three years, which was a lot of time back then. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had just finished Jade Empire, or no, not Jade Empire. They had just finished something. I I forget because Kotor came out before Jade Empire. Uh, I thought J- did they? I thought it was the other way around. No. Uh, let me see. I thought Co- I thought Kotor came out before. Jade Empire. Right, because Jade Empire it came out, it didn't get that much love, but it was okay. But then when Knights of the Old Republic came out, um, that's when Bay River starting, nope. was the kind of beginning of getting some love. Jade, Jade Empire came out two years after KOTOR. Just to put up. Wow! Uh, if, yeah. Both, both were Xbox exclusives, right? Mm-hmm. Which, yeah. by the way, if you have an Xbox One or an Xbox Series console, uh, and you're looking for a really cool, unique RPG to play. The mechanics are a little dated, but the game is really cool. Uh, it's set around Chinese mythology. It, Jade Empire is such a cool game. I think everybody should at least check out. It's only like five or ten bucks uh, on Xbox. Uh, but going back to Knights of the Old Republic 2, uh, the cool thing is is that this game was developed by Obsidian because. Uh, Bioware, the team that did this, did Knights of the Republic, moved on to Mass Effect. And uh, they wanted a second game. And it was originally supposed to be a trilogy, I think. Uh, Mm -hmm. But due to this game being rushed out and Obsidian moving on to different projects, it just never, the third game never got made. But this game was rushed out in nine months. And the last act of the game was never shipped. So when you kind of got to the, 
they kind of made it in a way to make it feel like it ended, but it really didn't. And you knew there was more story to wrap up. Uh, and the ending was just a big wall of text and you, that you had to read that kind of explained what the end of the game was. And so a lot of fans were disappointed. And I actually really like this one better because uh, you not only be, make your way to become a Jedi in this game, but you can also, or Sith, right? Because obviously choice was like a big thing. Uh, mm-hmm. But you also can take certain team members down paths and actually train them to become a uh, Jedi or Sith. Uh, so this is, this is a really cool thing that they aspire has been developing the end of the game. And so this is going to have a whole new chapter of the game that has never been seen before this version. Uh, uh, and it's coming to switch. So that's really, really cool. I can't wait to play it. Uh, so I, I've never played Knights of the Old Republic 2. Um, I know I didn't like the first one. If you didn't I like the first one, you're not going to like this one. I think I think now that I understand Bioware and their mechanics, mm-hmm. I think I could go back and give it a fair shake. Because I think that was the thing about it is that I didn't understand Bioware's design and games until I played Mass Effect. Mm-hmm. And I, and I was just like, I cannot just like, I, I I didn't like them because of Kotar and because they're, I think they're, their games is kind of designed PC ish, mm-hmm. in a way, and not so console that I had knew that I knew of. So I think with me standing with Mass Effect and playing some of their other games, I kind of got the philosophy and their design. Um, so I'm definitely going to be playing this on Switch. I'm definitely am going to buy this one because I never got to play it, mm. and I think I'm going to go back and play the first one, um, and just get a bit because I have, like I said, I have the first one. I have the original one. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think but, I think if you're a Switch owner and you want to play the, if you want to try this game out, I think that these games are worth playing. They're not very long. I think like you can. I think you can mainline the main story in about fifteen hours, mm-hmm. so it's not that long. Although there's a lot of side quests, and you actually get uh, bonus stuff for doing the side quests, which is really cool. Uh, plus, there's like a Paragon Renegade system in this also, where like, and you and you actually, if you choose one side or the other, uh, you actually get really cool stuff to take with you into the end of the game, uh, which is really cool. So like you get like a bonus. Uh, I think, I think there's like a, it's a bonus armor set. So like if you choose uh, the Jedi path, you get a really cool like Jedi costume. And if you choose the Sith path, I think there's a Sith costume that essentially does the same thing, but it's just a cooler version of the Sith costume. So uh, is, is the first one off switch? Mm-hmm. Kosar? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I've actually thought about playing it quite a few times, and now I, I want to play it now for when this game comes out. I want to. I'm I may just buy both. I'm I know I'm going to buy two on Switch. I may just buy both of them on Switch. Well, you, they are selling a bundle, the Knights of the Republic Legacy bundle, and you save five bucks if you buy both the bundle. I think they're both fifteen dollars, but the bundle is twenty five. Oh, that's not bad. That's a pretty good deal. Yeah. Aspire has yeah. been pricing these games really ridiculously cheap. I think I think all of the Star Wars games are between ten and fifteen dollars. I think the most expensive yeah. one was uh, Jedi Knight Jedi Academy, and it was twenty. Mm-hmm. And it's because they added online multiplayer. I wonder how, where did they get? I wonder if Lucas Films or Lucas Arts had the code for these games and gave it to Aspire to I, make. I mean, I'm sure someone go does, in. right? Like. I, Everything, everything Star Wars is so, so passionately archived at this point, right? So, yeah, I think I'm gonna jump in and get both of them. Yeah, I've been on a really get the big Star Wars kick. I'm like, so I'm making my way through, uh, I guess, <laughs> not to jump early into playing with power, but I've been playing a lot of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Mm hmm. And uh, it's making me really excited for Ubisoft's open world Star Wars game. Because, I, and I know it's not that team. I know it's the team that's making the division, but 
man, it's yeah. going to be cool. Also, the team that's making the Avatar game, which I'm also, like, <laughs> slightly interested in just because it's uh, massive making it, not because I'm an yeah. Avatar fan, because, let's be honest, who is? Uh, we had that discussion. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm sure there's one or two of you out there that likes that show, uh, movie, whatever. But, yeah, anyway, sorry, side tangent. No. Uh, no. So, look out for Knights of the Republic 2, The Sith Lords, with a new extended ending. Uh, it's going to add quite a little bit of the game, so. Because I remember I beat that game in, like, 20 hours or so, and it was supposed to be, like, 25 to 30, I think. So, that was my yeah. biggest gripe with that game was, at the time, was, like, there was... It had a lot of really, really cool, unique ideas and a lot of things that, like, were really cool in theory, but, like, the game wasn't long enough to flesh out those ideas. Right. And then it turns out, obviously, the end of the game was never in the game. So. <laughs> in the game. Wow. Hopefully that'll actually make this. And I actually think this game might, even though, like, the story in the first game is is one of the best stories in video games ever, I'd say. Uh, this this game was probably better in a lot of ways with those ideas, and I think mm-hmm. that this ending is going to make it better. So, yeah, I I I haven't been on the Star Wars kick, but um, I am looking forward to both games, and I'm looking forward to play it too because I it's going to be a new experience for me, um, and hopefully the in, the ending is good and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's uh, I think it's worth a playthrough. I I hope people give it a shot. I think we I think we should have a talk about it. Maybe mm-hmm. on on the expansion pass. Yeah. Like. Yeah. I I have some ideas for expansion pass, and I want to see if you agree now that some things are could be happening. So we'll talk about that after. But okay. Uh, let's move on to our next story, Ed. Uh, our next story. Marvel Midnight Suns uh, new rating suggests it's it may release sooner than we expect. Uh, this comes from IGN. Uh, Marvel's Midnight Suns may be due to release soon, following an official rating in South Korea. Remember, it was supposed to come out in February, and then they push it to the second half of 2022. Mm-hmm. Uh, as reported by Video Games Chronicle, Reddit user Long John Silver, that's a cool name. Uh, sp- spotted a rating below which pegs the XCOM style game IGN. It's not an XCOM style game. Sorry. They have been reporting on a lot of like weird information that's not correct lately. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not an XCOM style game. The studio who's making it may- made XCOM. And I get that it's like a strategy game, but it's not an XCOM style strategy game. So... <laughs> Uh, games are usually only presented to ratings boards like ESRB and Peggy uh, once they have complete or near complete state and accurate assessment of suitab- uh, suitability can be given, meaning Midnight Suns may almost be ready to be released. Um, let's see if there's anything else interesting in this announcement. Uh, it looks like this game could probably hit August. Uh so this game, for those who don't know, it's a, a turn-based strategy game, uh, but it also is a card-building collectible. Uh, it's a collectible card system where you use cards to assign moves to different characters, and uh, which is why I won't be playing it. Uh, but <laughs> anything that involves cards, I'm just out. What's it? Uh, the developers of League of... Was it League of... No, not League of Legends. No, XCOM. Um, I'm, I think I'm thinking of a different uh, developer. You must be. Uh, yeah, because there was another Marvel game that had that was card-based. And it was from the people who did that one card game for uh, Blizzard. And they ended up leaving and forming their own uh, studio. I don't, I don't know. I don't really follow <laughs> the card game scene, so I can't. I don't really know. I just right, I, I know there's popular. Uh, well, they 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 Marvel just announced a new card game. I think right. I think I went something. yeah. It, 
I I'm thinking maybe the League of Legends was the card based game, right? From Blizzard. No. Oh. I don't know. Uh anyways, this this game is uh looking like it's going to be hitting probably later this summer, early fall maybe. Uh mm-hmm. I know a lot of people are excited for it. I think the art style looks cool. I think the aesthetic looks cool. I think an XCOM style Marvel game would be cool, but I'm not doing the whole card system thing. And I I know people have yelled at me before, oh, just because it has cards in it, you're not going to play it? Yeah, I'm not going to play it because it has cards in it. I've played enough card games to know that I don't like card systems. I don't need to buy everything just because it says Marvel on it. Right. Uh, But it's uh it looks cool i hope it does well i think it's an interesting take on the these characters and uh yeah i'm glad to see that it's gonna get a release date i'm i'm excited that it's coming to switch i'll tell you that yes i I think uh it's a perfect style game for a handheld system i i did not do agree with you that uh having an august release would definitely be good because right now we just don't have anything like set for august um and i think that would be a great time to you know when people are going back to school or or you know taking their last holiday or something that'd be a good road trip game for people to play uh on switch in august so i agree with you that that game could come out in august yeah yeah so we'll see i'm i'm Excited to hear what people have to say about it. Yes. For sure. Um, why is this not? <laughs> it's not our cup of jail. Oh. Or... Uh, so, yeah. We're going to move on to our next story, Ed. This one uh, is about Dragon Quest Twelve. A quick update on the next mainline entry. Um, Dragon Quest. Is it, is it really? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, Yeah. Uh, this comes from our friends over at Nintendo Life, which I'm actually shocked that this game is coming to Switch. Especially, I mean, I know that Square and Nintendo have a long history of Dragon Quest being a Nintendo style franchise, mm-hmm. right? But like with PS5 and the way that Square is kind of working with PlayStation with Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts and you know some of these other franchises uh, for Spoken, like I'm actually shocked that they're going to try to make this work on switch i i i have a theory but go with the story and yeah. i'll explain uh dragon quest day was held earlier this week celebrating 36 years of the beloved jrpg franchise and as part of this series creator yuji hori uh shared a special message with fans apart from a new teaser from dragon quest treasures the creator also shared an update of the highly anticipated next entry in the mainline series dragon quest 12's the flames of fate apparently the team is still working hard to build and build the new game fortunately there will be plenty of other dragon quest games before then (laughs) oh gross uh plenty of games before then that means this game is never coming out uh i'm just kidding it'll be out in a couple years i'm sure uh which will hopefully make the wait slightly less painful. Here's exactly what he had to say via uh, Gematsu. Uh, We're working hard on building Dragon Quest XII, but there will be plenty more Dragon Quests to tide you over until it's finished. Thank you all for supporting the Dragon Quest series for 36 years. From me, Yuji Horii. No release dates or platforms have been revealed for Dragon Quest XII just yet, but we do know the game will run on Unreal Engine 5. Uh... Let's see. It's a uh, Japanese studio, Hexadrive, known for its involvement in Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker HD, and fellow Japanese company Orca, previously known for games uh, like Dragon Quest XI S Echoes of an Elusive Age Definitive Edition, will also be assisting Square Enix with development. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, there's a mobile version of Dragon Quest Builders coming. Uh, apparently, Dragon Quest X Offline. Uh, is coming at some point soon. I wonder... I mean, I think if if Hexadrive and Orca are involved, this game will s- make its way to Switch somehow. Uh, just because they're so heavily involved in bringing these games to to Nintendo platforms. But, uh, Adam, what are your thoughts on this? What are your thoughts on this non-update? <laughs> well, 
so let me get to my theory. So uh, people don't know that when Dragon Quest uh, 11 came out um, in Japan, they did it for PlayStation 4 and 3DS. Um, and when they did, I believe 3DS, yeah, they did it for uh, 3DS and for PlayStation 4. And they had where you could switch the switch those modes. Um, of you doing like the top down 2D sprite um and then just the game itself. And so they kind of it, it was kind of a big thing in Japan before it came here. So they did do PlayStation 4 and one for Nintendo for Dragon Quest 11 that came out at the same time in Japan. America just got it differently because they only did it for PS4. Um, later on down the line after they get got done with the localization and we didn't get the 3DS version because we got the Nintendo Switch version. Um, so that's how we got the definitive along with the Xbox version. Um, so uh, with this one, uh, I feel like they're going to, it's going to be mostly in Japan first that they're going to do PlayStation 5 and Switch it's a possibility they may do Xbox, um, but we don't know yet. I think when it comes to America, though, I think PlayStation 5 is going to get it first, and then uh, Nintendo will get it later on down the line. Uh, because we, right at, at this point in time, we don't know if how Switch is going to handle Unreal Engine 5 just yet. There's, there haven't been but any games. But we do know how it handles Unreal Engine 5. Fortnite is running on Unreal Engine 5. Did they, did they already switch it yeah, for Switch? Yeah, they switched it like six. They switched it before the beginning of the year. Like Fortnite was the first game that was utilizing Unreal Engine 5 across all platforms. Obviously, it's going to because it's mm. epic. But like, yeah, that's that was the whole kind of thing. Well, I didn't know they had switches to Unreal Engine mm-hmm. Five because it was all the, the game was working on a different engine. So I don't I know. Mean, if for, they... It's it's really I guess it's really simple to move your game from Unreal Engine Four to Unreal Engine Five. Like it's like r- ridiculously easy in terms of development standards of moving okay. engines. Uh, yeah, and I but think we haven't we haven't had a game build up from Unreal Engine Five. Uh, Switch. no. No, but I mean, we know of plenty of games that are running on Unreal Engine Five at this point now, right? Like uh, the next Tomb Raider, right? Uh, yeah. Whatever the next uh, Coalition game is from Xbox, there's there's a lot, and so Hellblade, uh, and Exile. Pretty much, if you think of an Xbox first party studio, it's like a ninety percent chance that they're working on Unreal Engine. So. Yeah. But I think for a Switch, we just there has it. Like I said, we we don't know yet. Yes, you for right for night because that was a transition. I don't know if there was anything built up from Unreal Five yet. I think Dragon Quest Twelve probably will be the first one at this point in time um, until we see like other indie games and other third party or ports uh, port companies start using it to build games up from that. Yeah. Um, or anything, but I th- I just think that PlayStation Five is gonna get it first, and then later on down the line we'll see it for Switch, mm-hmm. um, the Switch well, version. Well, that's if Square doesn't sell to someone. <laughs> oh. Uh, I I do literally that when we recorded that episode on uh Expansion Pass, um, and then uh. Because we recorded before they sold to Embrace it, right? I think. Who? Uh, no, no. We, no, we no. recorded that episode the week they re- they made the sale. That was our they episode. They made the sale. We recorded okay. that week. So when you was talking about selling to Sony, everybody felt like that was a rumor or, or something that's going to happen. Because people started talking about it. I'm just like, me and Corey, li- like literally the next day after we did that or of uh, a regular recording... It looks like everybody was talking about that square seller to Sony. Yeah. Well, I I think it I think it makes the most sense at this point. Like, not that I want Square's games going. I I would like to see them go multi-platform, but like it Mm -hmm. makes the most sense at this point. If they're gonna sell to somebody, it's gonna be (laughs) it's gonna be them. 
But it's, it's, it's so weird that they do that. But for Dragon Quest, it's such a big property for Square. And they know that uh, a lot of people who grew up with that series know that it's been a Nintendo regular. Definitely in Japan. Um, literally, pretty much after Dragon Quest Eight here in America, that's when it started kind of picking up getting popular. Uh because people started getting the games on 3DS when they re-released them. And Dragon Quest IX was a 3DS game, which I'm surprised they haven't ported that yet to Switch, if they ever thought about it. Because uh, that, that game even sold well uh, for Nintendo and for Square. So I wonder if with Dragon Quest XII, um, we just probably will see it later on down the line. We'll definitely see it in a, a Nintendo Direct. Because when they showed it on Dragon Quest uh, 10, not 10, 11, uh, on the Nintendo Direct, uh, people were just like, yeah, we're getting this game. <laughs> yeah. I think, what, was that the month that it was like a pack year? Was that 2019? Oh, I think geez, it was. It was It was that pack, it was that September that was packed. Yeah. So... Um, I think we, I think we will see it for Switch. I think we'll just see it later on down the line. I think maybe close to the, if they don't bring it to Switch, I think they're going to bring it to their next system. After you know, after they get done for the localization and everything, I think they're going to bring that to Switch's next system or Nintendo's next system. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, because because what would they need with um, Unreal Engine Five? I, I wonder because it's very a cell shaded animated kind of game. So unless they're going for a different graphic style, well, they said that's. That, the I mean, thing. I mean, I think that's the beauty of Unreal is that it can kind of handle anything you throw at it. Um, mm. I I know they said they're going to take like a darker tone to this, but I bet it still has like some sort of. An- anime art style right i mean that's it's kind of signature look so but you can do dark in anime right i mean look at yes i mean not that it's really an anime but look at look at castlevania right it has that art mm-hmm. style on netflix and it's dark you know yes so i don't know we'll see i think dragon quest has a pretty long way to go and i guess we'll talk more about it when we find out more uh, uh, are, uh, what? Oh no! I was just going to ask you. No, nope. do you see Fire Emblem running on Unreal Engine Five? If Nintendo got their hands on it, I mean, I don't know. Well, I don't know. I have thoughts about the next Fire Emblem, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, our last story here, and uh, report is that EA almost merged with NBC Universal before the deal with Comcast dissolved. This comes from Game Informer. Mergers, acquisitions, and consolidation are all the rage with major conglomerates these days. Microsoft is in the process of acquiring Activision Blizzard. Discovery and Time Warner have recently finished merging into a mega media empire. And Sony is bringing Bungie into the PlayStation family. What we didn't know about is the now failed bid for NBC Universal to strengthen its hand by folding electronic arts into its corporate umbrella. Uh, then it kind of goes on to say, like, what's happening what happened to the deal i'm not going to get into all that but uh, i do want to pose the question to you ed how interesting or not interesting would it be if ea merged with nbc universal because universal owns a lot of uh ip that could be turned into cash cow video games Mm -hmm. uh so um, I think everybody will be puzzled because they. I think everybody will probably will be like, "What would Univ- What would Universal need with EA, and why would EA need to sell if they're a company that made all this money in the past? Like, why would they need to be bought out?" Um, well, the thing, well, one of the things that I thought of for at least for Madden and FIFA or whatever they're going to be named in the future, or their golf game is that NBC has a huge sports group, right? Mm-hmm. NBC Sports is is huge, and they wouldn't have to pay the ESPN license uh, to Disney anymore. They wouldn't have to 
like i mean they would still pay these broadcasters but it would be under like their nbc contract instead of a game development contract uh they could do kind of use they could use nbc's kind of sponsor pool to throw into these games like this game was brought to you by speed stick or whatever you know what i mean like (laughs) they could they could definitely uh utilize a lot of that uh especially in their sports games uh so they, they they could do a lot with that merger and uh obviously they own uh, NBC Universal owns like Illumination and Dreamworks which are pretty i would say they're kid friendly animated studios right like Illumination's making the Mario movie and Dreamworks mm-hmm. is like Shrek and Madagascar and whatever else you know so i mean there's a lot they could do. There, there, there's a lot of IP they could handle. There's a lot of uh, sports style things they could have handled. It's there's a lot there that would have probably benefited them. Plus, NBC could kind of put their name in the ring for game development. Although I don't know if this is really the time to do that. Uh, somebody tweeted out, "Oh man, we'd missed out on our Real Housewives walking simulator or whatever." <laughs> Or like the Telltale uh, version of of <laughs> Real Housewives. Real Housewives. Uh. Yeah, I, I, I think, I think people would, I think EA would have been become like the laughing stock. Uh, of course, they would. I think they would make games out of uh, their action and drama TV shows. They would. They could make games out of there. Uh, but outside of that, like. I don't know. It just feels weird. Like, what would what would they, what would they do? Because I'm like, you guys are a big company still here in America. You guys are they're still important to a lot of uh, consumers. So, partnering up with NBC, I I I, I would just be confused on like, what are you going to offer? You know, like is Battlefield. Are you guys going to switch ideas now that Battlefield now becomes a TV series and they kind of coincide with each other? Like, here go the TV series and then here go the game or here go the movie version of Battlefield. Like, what would... I don't know. I I kind of would just laugh at this because I'm like, this is the most insane thing of this ever happening. Like, what are you guys going to come out of it? You know... Of course, you can't do like surprise mechanics if they, if they want to call it that. Like they wouldn't be able to do all of that uh, nonsense of DLC and gotcha mechanics and stuff. I, yeah, I would just I literally would have been puzzled on how this would have been how how this would work. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I just uh, I I think the benefit <laughs> I think the the benefit definitely would not really I mean unless you're talking about their sports titles I don't really think there's a benefit on either side right this is the rumor that why Warner Brothers is getting out of gaming and trying to sell off their studios right it's because Mm -hmm. it's costing them too much money and I think they're looking at what Disney is doing with with their IP right like licensing it out to studios who know how to make games and uh, say what you will about Marvel taking over too many marvel games too many star wars games but like if you're a game developer that's like i i think unless you're like naughty dog or nintendo or something like to that nature right just one of these developers where people think that you're top tier yeah everybody wants to work on a superhero game or a star wars game or something like an ip that they love growing up with right and so I think Warner Brothers is looking at Disney thinking that, you know, they're doing a stellar job for the most part licensing out these IP, you know, and and making great games like Guardians of the Galaxy, great. Spider-Man, great. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Jedi Fallen Order, great. Battlef- or Battlefront 2, besides EA's uh, kind of, what do you, microtransaction tactics game, is a solid game. It's a great game. It's just all the paywall crap kind of hurt them. But yeah. Uh, 
still still a great game uh tie fi- uh, uh squadrons was was great so i think their only kind of real miss was the avengers in my opinion uh oh marvel ultimate alliance pretty good so uh yeah i i think that i think that they would be ma- they would have made a mistake by merging because I think a lot of these big companies are getting out of gaming and licensing to people to know, who know how to make games instead of running their uh, studios themselves. So, but but it's weird with Warner Brothers because I'm like, okay, you guys got DC. Is the problem that you only can make Batman games? I think the I think the problem is is that it. I think the amount of money that they would like to make versus the amount of money it costs to run these studios. Cause you think about it, like Gotham Knights has been in development for seven years. Harry, uh, Harry Potter has been in development for five years. Suicide squad by the time it comes out, will have been in development for eight years. That's mm-hmm. a lot of time to not make money. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so, and by the time that Wonder Woman game that's been, that was announced from the Lord of the Rings studio, I forget, uh, WB Montreal, I, no, that's not it, WB Monolith, uh, like, different Monolith than Xenoblade, by the way, there's two yes. Marvel studios. Like, by the time that comes out, you know, uh, it, it will have been six or seven years since their last game. I mean, you think about that, that's a lot of time to invest on the property and not make any money while you're running these studios. Right. So Mm -hmm. of course, if you license them out, you're still going to have to fund the project, but you're not paying the company overhead. You're not paying the insurance. You're not paying the equipment. Like, you know what I mean? You're just not paying all that. That's up to the studio to do that or PlayStation or Xbox or whoever's managing these studios. So, uh, I, I think, I think they really dodged a bullet here. Uh, not, that I think EA is a bad company. I actually think the way they've kind of turned the company around is pretty spectacular from going to, you know, voted the worst company in America, which I still don't think that they were that they just were not doing very consumer friendly things, uh, to now, you know, you get these little kind of indie style games, you get single player action games, right? We're getting the dead space remake. We're getting skate four. Mm-hmm. We're getting Jedi fallen order two. We're getting, and then you still have your cash cows like Madden and EA sports football club <laughs> instead of uh, FIFA <laughs> next year. Uh, well, I think for some people with EA, I think they felt like when it, when it was voted worst company in America, I think it was because people felt like they were greedy. That's well, yeah, the DLC. That's, that's, I mean, that's, that's the, and, uh, you know, and and the quality of their games were for some people were like really poor. Mm-hmm. You know they they built up they they built and they marketed these games up, and then when they actually got released, mm-hmm. people weren't enjoying them because it was just like this. Well, yeah, I mean, you look at Anthem, you look at Mass Effect Andromeda, you look at people begging EA to fix Madden's franchise mode forever. Like, there's there's a lot of complaints that they need that they've had to address and. Rightfully so, right? Uh, the last Dragon mm-hmm. Age was like some people liked it, some people didn't, so, uh, so, and we saw them kind of admit that they've changed because uh, the next Dragon Age was supposed to be a game as a service. The next Dragon Age was supposed to be a MMO light style game, like like Anthem or Destiny, and they switched gears. They said, "Nope, we're switching it back to a single player experience, so we're going to be taking longer," and. I think those types of decisions are what's going to kind of benefit them in the long run. So, yeah. Uh, but Ed, that's the, uh, last news story I have. So back to you. All right, everybody. Um, this is, we're into doc mode and, uh, just be ready for this discussion. Um, on Tuesday, May 24th, there was a mass shooting in Uvalde, Texas at Rob elementary where 19 students and two teachers were shot and killed as things are still under investigation and mature video games have once again been blamed. It seems that reason, 
it seems that reasoning isn't working with parents and others outside of gaming. That possible uh, possible motive has fallen on deaf ears. Before we get into the discussion, please check out our editor-in-chief, David Lasby, latest editorial titled, Stop Blaming Video Games for Mass Shootings. It truly is worth the read on Boss Rush Network, on BossRush.net. For this dogma, we're going to talk about why politicians, police, and others use games as an excuse or conclusion, and if the real situation for mass shootings would ever be fixed. Why games like Columbine RPG and other and others that deal with mass shootings are hard to accept. If this is too hard to listen to, please elite be, uh, elite black agents. Skip to what we're playing or check out our latest Nintendo Expansion Pass about Switch's future and uh, standard definition about the Game Boy and Game Boy Color. Here we go. So, um, yeah, David put out a really great auditorial for Stop Blaming Video Games for Mass Shootings. Um, and it's it's kind of definitely with you, Corey, being a parent um, and your daughter going to school. Um, me, you know, I don't have kids, but as a black person in uh, kind of an urban neighborhood, and and that still deals with some shootings in different places. Um, we definitely in a black community, and I'm just going to uh, address it from my perspective. We don't have mass shootings. I haven't um, seen... It, Buffalo was definitely a race-related mass shooting. Oh, yes. True. But um, I, I think the mass shooting as in, like, there's a black person scooting up a majority black school. Um, we haven't had... And, we in a lot of the black schools uh they put out so many security measures like um metal detectors guards um you know pe- the guards would they have that metal scanner it was checking every day checking our book bags like cuz they believed that we were going to be infested with a lot of gangs so there was a fear that there would be a lot of gang shootings at school in the black community um, and ever since Columbine happened, uh, there's been a lot of kind of those kind of mass shootings at uh, at at different at different I'll say suburban class, suburban schools in different places. Um, and it, it was kind of, it's kind of weird to definitely now seeing it, you know. And it saddens me that this happened. We you know we don't we don't understand why it happened. I think we're still trying to figure it out and stuff, but we had a a perceived outlook on our black schools. Definitely here in North Chicago, which is is, even in Chicago, there was just a perceived that if it was going to be a mass shooting, it was going to be gang related and stuff. And Video games wouldn't have been blamed for any of that. It would have been the it would have been blamed on gangs and the black community and drugs and all of this and, and everything. But to see that, you know, to, to see that politicians and police just jump automatically to well because he was the age of eighteen or he was in his teenage years, video games were the reason why. Or help them prepare to do the shooting, and I I just don't understand that logic, um, and everything. I don't know why mature video games get uh get blamed for it. I mean, anything. there's there's a lot of things to look at here. I don't like this. Uh, first of all, this whole thing like every time I hear about one of these things, it's like super gut wrenching and I just, I Mm -hmm. don't want to think about it. And all the school is supposed to be a safe place for kids, right? Yes. It's supposed to be a safe place where you go and learn and be with friends and, and people that you trust to show your kids how to kind of live life and, you know, live how we're, you know, go on to get a job or whatever. And it's like the fact that this keeps happening and this is the only country where it keeps happening is appalling. And, you know, there's a gun bill 
sitting in the Senate. It has been for two years. There's two Democrats that won't sign it and a huge majority of the Republicans that won't sign it because most of them are backed by the NRA. Most of them are backed by these, you know, that having guns benefits them somehow, right? And there's a lot of selfish people who just don't want to relinquish their power in government and are willing to sacrifice these kids, right? These kids. Mm -hmm. Kids, man. Kids. In order to keep power. And I don't like to get... I don't really like to get super political on these shows. And, you know, there's a lot of people that we work with and are on staff that believe in different things and, you know, whatever. And we respect we respect that the best that we can. And I think that's what kind of gives us a different voice as opposed to other outlets. But like, there's a point where, where you have to look at the grand scheme of things and it doesn't become about which side of the line you're on, which party you belong to. Guns are, I'm not, I'm, not on the side of banning guns but the fact that like it's easier to get to buy a gun than it is to drive a car get a passport uh you know there's probably a laundry list of things that you could get that are harder to get than a weapon right this kid in uh uvalde texas was 18 he purchased two AR-15s, right, straight up. No background check, no uh, and no anything. And he shot his grandmother, and then he drove to this elementary school and killed 21 people. And that, to me, is... There's something, there's something wrong with this picture. And... Yeah, okay, I I understand that they kind of pointed out that he was he played these cyber games and group gaming and stuff and that came up too and some of that became a memeable moment which on one hand is kind of like I don't I don't know if you should be really doing that at this mo- moment. Yeah. This uh um and like I didn't really see it cuz like I I've been reading about this thing and talking about this thing for almost a week and a half at this point and uh i didn't really see a lot of people pointing to video games as his motive uh i think a lot of people are just looking for answers and right now i think it's just why didn't the cops respond as quickly as they could why weren't they in the building why was he barricaded in a room for 60 minutes before anybody responded these kinds of things uh but to that point, like video games do come up a lot in these conversations. Um, it's already been proven that video games psychologically don't cause violence in kids. Like maybe a little bit aggressive here or whatever, but like it doesn't cause violence. And it's uh, it's just. Well, get, I just, before... I just, I get that people are looking for answers, and this like a lot of games that people think about, like Grand Theft Auto, Call of Duty, uh, Destiny, Halo. You're shooting people. Like that's the whole point of these games is that you're shooting people, you're murdering people to gain an objective. And I, like I see where non gamers look at that and say that could possibly be a cause, but like. I think you have to look at the person himself, right? He was poor, not in a great neighborhood, being raised by his grandma, right? So clearly, there, I don't. From what I have seen, there's no parents in the picture, um, and kind of not a great area, uh, like a poor area of Texas, right? It it I where I'm. <laughs> From what I hear about Texas is like not, you know, uh, he 
probably wasn't treated very well in the grand scheme of things because he was Hispanic and this was a Hispanic area, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I think you have to look at stuff like that first. Yeah, okay, he was bullied at school, but, like, I was bullied in school, you know? I think a lot of us were, and if you're going to... If he was bullied at school, why did he go to an elementary school and not his high school or whatever, right? Like, yeah. I think there's a lot of things you have to point at before you say, oh, he played video games, right? Like, it's just... I don't know. This whole thing, I, like, personally, really sick and sick of talking about this, tired of talking about this. But, like, I just think as a group, we have to do better. There's a lot of things we need to discuss. Like, I, that whole, like, my daughter's last week of school was last week, and I, like, was holding my breath that like I wouldn't get like a phone call from someone saying mm -hmm. you know and and I shouldn't have to be afraid to send my kids to school you know they should be able to go and and be safe and us pick them up and they're glad to be home and it's it's just been a whirlwind you know as as my daughter gets over these are the things that I'm going to have to start like really thinking about and it's something that we shouldn't have to think about we didn't have to think about this stuff when, at least like you know i know maybe for you it might have been different but like th this stuff didn't even cross my mind columbine was like a one and done thing when i was younger right like mm -hmm. and i and i think it i think it has to do with this whole i i think the internet does a lot of great things, right? It keeps us connected with people. It allows us to find people who are, have the same interests as us. Like, I mean, we would have never been friends without the internet, right? Like it, it right. helps us find things and it provides a lot of information and it, it, it's a great tool and a great asset. But like, I think a lot of it is the, black and whiteness of social media and the black and whiteness of separating uh <laughs> just it, it, i i th i think that there's a lot of build up and anxiety and and especially over the last 5 or 6 years right like mm -hmm. I, I like i i really think that we when Again, not to be super political on the show, but like, I think when during the Obama administration, I feel like as a country, whether you liked Obama or not, I feel like as a country, we were in a good place in terms of how we felt about diversity and, you know, different groups of people kind of working together and being mm -hmm. a better kind of country. And with the rise of social media and the way that the Trump administration kind of just eliminated everything that we felt was good. And a lot of people, I mean, a lot of non-white people were scared, right? Like, uh, 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 it just became this ever divisive thing. And I think that that made things a lot worse and why a lot of this stuff is worse now than it has been in a long time uh, mm -hmm. because he was so polarizing and it brought a lot of it brought a lot of people to the forefront that maybe kind of kept quiet during the previous administration and were now not afraid to show who they really were during true this past administration and i think the like the january 6th attack on the capitol was one mm -hmm. thing that truly showed how truly divided this country is and how black and white everything has to be and i don't think it has to be that way but i think people are still kind of i don't want to say it. I, I feel like people are still recovering from that and what is okay and what isn't and 
you know, just an amalgamation of things. People are still kind of okay. We, it's 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 been slow to get back to what was before the Trump administration, and you know, it, it it's just. I I have a lot to I have a lot to say, and I I know I'm kind of rambling now, Ed. Just say something so I can just stop talking. So, now. but it, I, I'm just. So, be, so, sorry. Be, me, be, before you, before you go, I just have one. I just like. I get that, in this world that we're living in today, like, I'm, awfully privileged to come from, you know, in in just from a visual standpoint as a, a a straight white male who came from a family who was never really hurting for money and was never really you know hurting for a lot of things and uh went to a pretty decent school uh and I, like i realize that i'm kind of in a privileged position but with this privileged position that people seem to think that I have because of what I look like and who I am as a person. It's my duty to make sure everyone around me is built up to have the same privilege and the same voice and the same platform to use their voice. Right. Mm -hmm. And I want people to look at you and Laurent and Stephanie and Celeste the same way that they look at people like me and Dan and David and so on, you know, like, and I know like this shooting wasn't like a, <laughs> like a, a, a race thing, but a lot of the shootings are have been right. The Buffalo one was a race thing. The recent one yeah. that happened yesterday in Chattanooga, Tennessee, I'm pretty sure it, it hasn't come out, but I'm pretty sure it was a group of white people and a group of of black people opening fire on each other, where seven people have been injured, no deaths, thank God. But you know, but the age of there were like ranging from 13 to 16 mm -hmm. for that one. Yeah, and and. So with this platform that we've built, it's, at, it's, it's, it's my duty to raise the voices of others so that their voices are overpowering to the point where it will always hopefully feel like everybody has equal voice, equal footing here. Mm -hmm. And if people don't want to share that, that that work here or or podcast here or right here if you don't feel like everyone is equal and i'm saying everyone even if somebody believes something different if you at least at least don't respect the differences and believe everybody should have the same voice i don't really think you belong here you know so it's it's uh I don't know. This last week has been really stressful, uh, and well, I, and I I wasn't even involved in this. I can't imagine what these families are going through, and and I I don't know what would happen if if we were involved in something like this. Like, well, well, the the thing about it. So you mentioned how is it was easier. I was trying to figure out what is the price of an AK forty seven, like. How do how do people get the money to even get the, or even have the credit cards or anything? Now before you you don't have to answer that right now, Corey. It, it just it, it boggles my mind because if you go to any store, if you are not seventeen and up with a driver's license or state ID, you cannot buy in ready game. And it's not that's not law. That literally is store policy. There are stores who have a policy that regardless of what your age is, you have to show a driver's license to get, to buy this game. And they have to scan your ID. We did it at Toys. They do it at Best Buy. Um, 
they do it at Target. Like it literally says that uh, we need your driver's license so we can see it, so we can scan it into our system. So you have to do something to even buy uh, an in ready game. Mm-hmm. If that is, if that takes more, if that seems trying than buying a gun, that should bring questions. Because I, I think politicians and police and people who are using that, who, who are non gamers, who are adults, trying to give a provide an answer or something to why this is happening, they probably don't know anything about that. They just end up making that reasoning and stuff. Um, and so, like, I, I, and I can honestly say, I didn't know this shooting had happened until I checked Twitter while I was at work because I was just I, I was on my way to work. I would thought there would be some breaking news. I would listen to the radio, the radio stations talk about it. Nothing. I didn't know anything about this until uh, Twitter, and they were still doing the investigation. And so when the police chief came out and was giving his reasoning and everything, people were not buying it. They people were literally upset with the police. People well, were upset with yeah because with the, the recent police. the recent knock on police is that they're out. I mean, I guess it's not so recent. It's just become more apparent to me over the last few years, like probably since the uh, uh, oh, what's who's the guy that died with the guy. Uh, Floyd, what's his name? George Floyd. George Floyd, thank you. Like, since then, it really just feels like, and maybe you have a different experience, but it just seems like the police are out to try to cover their own ass. Sorry for cursing on the show, but like, it just feels like they're out to protect themselves and the politicians are out to protect themselves instead of like, sucking it up taking the hit taking the blame once in a while and saying we messed up we messed up and you know that i know that doesn't seem like it goes a long way but when you accept responsibility for something Mm -hmm. it goes a long way in healing these people who have suffered these tragedies. Yeah. There's, I think what makes a lot of people upset when mass shootings happen and gangs get blamed or people are trying to find the blame is the disconnect Mm -hmm. that one thing does not equal the reasoning or why this happened because, um, and everybody could check. I, I did, um, uh, editorial called Silence on Adult Violence. That when mass shootings happen from a, when the shooter is an adult or anything, nothing about video games get reported. Mm-hmm. When when mosques get shot up, when a mall gets shot up, when that concert that happened, that you know that country mm-hmm. uh, country concert that happened, and that grown man was shooting from that building, like none of that stuff has happened with anything with video games. It always happens when someone who is younger saying that they're the ones that, that, you know, they play video games. And that's not true, you know, or it's not understandable. It's kind of weird. It's just kind of weird that they would jump to that conclusion. Instead of just being upfront to be like, hey, we are investigating why this happened. We do not have any answers. We are trying to we are trying to find answers. At this part, at this point in the time, we are mourning for the families who lost a child to this, or who lost somebody who was shot and you know and died from it. It's just it's just being upfront and everything. Just saying what you don't you, you don't know. You're trying to piece stuff together, and then when you got when you feel like you got enough information, then present it to the people, you know, regardless if you're a politician or a police, because mass shootings are still going to happen. There's nothing hindering anyone from getting a gun and committing that kind of crime. You don't even have to play video games or anything. If, if, if it's easier to obtain one, people will obtain one and go out and, you know, take out their frustration, um, uh, you know, bring out their their beliefs and feel like they obtained something and everything. And it's just, it's, 
it's, it's just that disconnect that people, I think, sometimes just don't get. So uh, that's why I put the question of Calibai in here, Calibai RPG, because the game was is an indie game that was developed, I think, a year after Calibai happened. I have an optional opinion on it. And, you know, people found it, the game disgusting because she played as the killers. And you killing the students were like, uh, were just like, done in an RPG style where you get experience uh-huh. and stuff. Yeah. And uh it was for it was for an indie contest and everything. And they were just they the the developers say we just want to get people in the mindset of being these killers. Yeah. You know, we're not trying we're not trying to bring an idea or say that we wouldn't for them, but it's but this is probably what happened. This is probably what the feeling. And then they create an ending and all of that stuff because they end up getting, they end up killing themselves. And then this is how the game goes for the other part and stuff. Um, even the game called Hatred, where you are a man who goes out and commit these crimes, such as shooting people, but it's police, innocence, whatever. Um, right. It, you know, it got this AO rating and everything. And people look at it because I I think it, it's not accepted in today's gaming society or community because it's too real. It's too um, for some people it's a reminder of that incident. You know, of people who experienced and went through Calibine to survive they find Calibine RPG disgusting. Yeah. Um, people who have uh, I, mean, I think it's pretty disgusting anyway <laughs> But at the same time, like, what are the developers' intentions, right? Like, you, if, if you, like, just, yes, Columbine was a terrible tragedy. It was awful. Mm-hmm. What's the intention of the developer? Is it to show people what their, the killers were thinking? Is it, like, a, uh, I don't, not that I'm comparing these two games, but, like, I mean, you look at a game like Hellblade, and you're meant to be, experiencing psychosis with with uh uh senua right yeah like is columbine rpg taking that approach and looking at it and say oh well we're trying to kind of figure out why they would have done this what was their mental health state what was their mental you know what was their mental capacity were they just psychopaths like you know but or was it to kind of was it ill intended in being like, oh, we're making fun of this because we're jerks? And uh, judging by when the game was made, and uh, uh, I'm pretty sure when this game came out, and uh, I think it was pretty ill intended, and it was removed from Steam, and I don't think it ever got like a proper release on any other storefront. Like, that's just a terrible thing to look at. Uh, mm-hmm. And that was what 20 years ago at this point yeah uh so i mean it's video games i'd never want to tell like because there's another controversial video game coming out either at the end of this year or next year uh uh six days in fallujah which uh was originally a konami game and it, it kind of explored the war uh uh from uh, what the Iraq war, I think. And yeah, it, it was canceled even though it was finished and, uh, high, uh, what was it? High wire. Is that who picked it up? High wire. I think, think so. Yeah. Uh, is working on it. And that game is for some reason controversial. And that's something you need to look at and be like, well, I think they're doing it the right way where, they're looking at it from the survivors of that and exploring what happened, what really happened, what went wrong. Because I think the big thing with that was, uh, what was it? The white phosphorus as a weapon and killing innocent people. Uh, and I think the real story, don't get me wrong, I, didn't, I haven't done the research yet but on this, but I don't think the real story ever came out. No. Uh, so forgive me if I'm wrong on that, but, uh, what they're doing is kind of exploring how these soldiers had to, uh, explore these unknown 
environments and deal with the war and deal with the ramifications of the war and and there's interviews and there's uh, clips of soldiers who are really there and they're exploring both sides of the story not just one and to me that's really interesting I I just to kind of put a bow on it because I really do want to talk about something way more positive than this uh, I I understand why outsider from an outsider's perspective you look at the games we play and the ones that are popular uh, and say wow I how are kids allowed to like <laughs> play these games you know but like I think people who understand games also and from like storytelling perspectives and like there's so uh, such a variety of games and it's such a good place to tell stories and learn things, you know, and, and all kinds of things that like, I don't know. It, it's just, it, it hurts to see something that we all love so much, right? We all mm -hmm. love this, this hobby so much and it, it hurts to see it attached to so many bad things when people don't fully understand the hobby uh, but it's like anything else, things you don't understand, especially in the world today, if you don't understand it or, you know, you don't have an opinion on it, it becomes a bad thing instantly. And that's what I was talking about earlier of the whole, it's a black or white situation and there's never any gray area. And I think that there's a lot of room for gray area discussions and, I think it's sad that we don't have them. Anyways, I'll stop talking so we can kind of move on. I don't, I don't want to let it. I like, you know what I mean? I, I just, what well, now I'm I rambling. Think... Cause like now <laughs> I, I, I just had like, I'm in the space now where I feel like there's a lot to talk about, but I don't want to get into all these issues here because this is Nintendo power block is not the place to have these discussions. I think something well, like after dark is the place to have yes. some of these discussions. I I think the thing, and the reason why I presented to this to Nintendo Pop Block, I think it's because definitely with me, you kind of being like founders of Boss Rush and, you know, being for Nintendo Pop Block, I think when it comes to video games, that when one part of video games get blamed, a lot of stuff starts to trickle out to it. So it may happen to Microsoft and Sony and, and even Nintendo games that the littlest thing that's a, that's violent may give a kid an idea or something. And then just different opinions and stuff might be against you and stuff. Yeah. And, I, and I think this, like I said, yeah, it is hard to have these conversations. Yes. What does this have to do with Nintendo? It don't, it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to do much, but there could be some things in the Nintendo game that get, that gets attached to this. Even though that's not that's not Nintendo's fault, they didn't intend it to be be they be that way. They know they what they want to create is fun, imaginative, creative creative worlds. But so does Microsoft and Sony. They want to do the same thing. And I think when you attack just a, a rating of games, mature games, that that just seems unfair. And then what ends up happening is that if we allow mature games to get attacked. Any game could be get attacked. If a car accident happens, oh, I'm gonna blame Mario Kart for it. Why? Because it's Mario Kart. Even though that's an E-rated game, you're blaming a video mm -hmm. game because of someone's well, bad accident. Well, at the at the end of the day, right? Just so we can put a mm -hmm. bow on this, because uh, we, yes. I mean, we have been on this conversation a long time, but like, just to put a bow on it. To me, right? The the cars don't kill people right well i guess with self-driving cars that could be some sort oh. of you know uh, yeah well on well on one of the podcasts that i produce at work uh we had a discussion can you make a truly unbiased ai uh and a lot of the discussion was around self-driving cars and uh developing ais for certain things and and a lot of the conversations was around uh you know, the AI is only as biased as the person who makes it. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things where like, 
but not sorry not to get on off topic but at this moment as of this recording it's like the cars don't kill people it's the people driving right and making the decisions that they're making uh Mm -hmm. i'm not i'm all for people having a weapon to defend themselves if they need to right like like if you want a handgun that's properly stored and locked away to protect yourself if you have a break-in or something like i am totally okay with that but i am also at the point where like i don't think you should be able to have a collection of assault weapons like what what are you doing like why do you need a collection of assault weapons you know and so to me i think the second amendment although valid needs revisited because like my wife and i were talking about after this terrible tragedy in texas and buffalo and now tennessee uh the when this second amendment was written these these people who wrote the constitution were stuffing their rifles with metal balls and stuffing them down pipes with swiffers, right? Like (laughs) these, they weren't carrying around assault weapons or automatic weapons. They were carrying around, uh, rifles that you had to load manually and took quite a bit of time to load manually to the point where a lot of them would still fight with swords because it was faster. Right. So that's my opinion on it. I'm putting a bow on it. I want to talk about video games. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to get to Flame of Power. I, uh, my f- final say uh, on this thing is that I know we're going to, there's going to be more conversations. We know that there's going to be more events like this. And, you know, depending on your age or wherever, any way that you could get involved. Go ahead and get involved. Um, and for parents who have kids who are going to school, like, I'm not saying that this is a wake up call or anything, but really, it it really just like love your child even more in a sense. Like really, like hug them, tell them that you love them. Like really, really show them that you're someone that they can rely on. You know, I I think one of the one of the thing is is that do your best to be there for them. And I know it's going to get a point where parents have to explain stuff like this, and you just got to be a parent and really explain um, why these things happen and everything. And you know, maybe have lunch and pull out your Nintendo Switch and play Splatoon or something. <laughs> I don't know, yeah. uh, but but like. Uh- you know, I, I know we have a lot of parents that listen to the show, and I'm sure a lot of them are just as sick to their stomach as mm-hmm. uh, a lot of us are. And uh, I just want to say, you know, that there's nothing like, you know, I never, when, you know, when I was younger, like, I never thought about having kids or, like, if I really wanted them or not, like, it was a conversation I would have with girlfriends or whatever but nothing like serious and then when my daughter was born like I could never imagine my life without my kids in it now and if something ever happened to them like it would I I don't know what I would do like I really don't know what I would do and that's what is just eating me up inside about this whole thing every time we hear about one of these yeah yeah so everybody, um, that's gonna be it with Doc Mo. Uh, let's get into playing with power. Um, Corey, where have you been playing with power? Ah, uh, man, now that I'm all, <laughs> whatever. Uh, all right. So playing with power, I've been playing a lot of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I just wrapped the first storyline in the oh, game. Oh wow! The the family storyline I wrapped today. Uh, mm. that was pretty cool. Uh, there's two more that I have to finish up. The cultist are leaders. You, I have. Are you to trying finish. to? Are, are you trying to beat the gang? I'm trying to. I'm gonna try to get all the endings, and then I still have the the legacy of the first blade stuff to play. Okay. And I still have the Atlantis stuff to play, uh, which will probably add another 
30 or 40 hours of <laughs> my gameplay. Uh, I'm trying to like kind of mainline the game now at this point. Uh, and then do some side stuff if I need to level up or something. But I'm pretty leveled. I'm pretty far into it. So I think it's... Uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm pretty sure I'll be all right. Uh, but I do kind of want to explore more of the game because I'm having so much fun playing in this world. I think Assassin's Creed Odyssey is like one of my favorite games of all time at this point. Uh, and I've said that multiple times, but now that I'm like really back in it and playing it, it just feels so good to move around the world. It feels so good to just play. It knows it's a video game. Like, I can jump off one of the tallest cliffs and do a do a roll and not take any damage, right? Like it knows it knows you want it, you need to be somewhere. It knows the world is big and you need to get there as fast as possible. It's just so fun to play this game. I I know some people prefer Valhalla or Origins over this, but I will take Assassin's Creed Odyssey over all of those um and I, I know a lot of people have their own various opinions on Assassin's Creed, but it's definitely mm-hmm. one of my favorite series of all time. I love the series, and uh, I can't wait to finish this game, although it'll probably take me another month or so to finish it up. Just all the DLC and stuff, I think. I want to I want to see Atlantis. I want to see where the story goes and all that. Uh, but which actually reminds me like I finished one of the storylines and it didn't kick me out to present day. I always forget there's a present day <laughs> aspect to these games. Uh, but yeah, I love that game. If you have a PlayStation or an Xbox or PC, like P- Odyssey is on sale all the time. The game is so, it's just so wonderful to play. I, I need to switch it to my series X. Uh, oh yeah, there. yeah. If you do have a Series S or X, it has a it has an optimization patch for those platforms, so uh, it runs at a full sixty frames a second at four K. Oh, it's so good! I love it. I love the the jankiness of the of the NPC, <laughs> of the NPCs too, because they're all like, first of all, all their voice acting is super over exaggerated, and uh-huh. like as beautiful as the worlds are in Assassin's Creed in the boats and the buildings and the structures and everything. And like your main, like the main character always looks great too. Like uh, I'm playing as Cassandra, but you can play either Cassandra or Alexios uh, and they look great. And like some of the main players in the game look great, right? Like some of the main NPCs look great, but like, when you're doing a random side quest for a random NPC, man, they just look like trash. <laughs> you know? And, and I know that's what happens when you have to kind of like auto-generate thousands and thousands of people, right? Stuff, it's, the stuff just looks off, right? It, it's like it's so funny that you mentioned that because that's Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah. That the, <laughs> yeah. Like the main character, like Jen Sakai looks so good. And then you get to the NPC, like, what is this jaggy asset? The yeah. heck? Yeah, I mean the 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 games I always go to are like the Final Fantasy games, right? Where like there's all these detail poured into the main characters and your party and stuff, and then you walk up to like the generic characters and they just they look like I, I they look like they're from a different game. Man. <laughs> yeah, and it's just like and and these aren't that bad, but it's still like okay, I'm playing in this Series X version of of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. These characters look like they're from the Xbox 360 version of Assassin's <laughs> Creed 2 or something, right? It's just so bad. Uh, uh, so, anyways, I've, I've been neck deep into that. I've been neck deep in the new season of Destiny, season of the Haunted. Uh, nothing really to say there. Uh, I'm actually... This is kind of the first time in a, uh, the season where I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to like, I don't know. I don't really care for the event. I think the seasonal event is way too long. It is, it is way too long. They brought the Leviathan back, which is, which was mm. the location of the first raid. And it's just now like a area that you can explore and do like, it's like basically like when you land on a planet, you can go do patrols or, or lost sectors or whatever. It's basically that now, which is okay, but I don't really care. Like the main thing in the game is a, is a public event. 
uh, instead of a menu where you go to and actually access the seasonal event. Um, I think the new, I think Iron Banner is coming back tomorrow, so that'll be fun. Uh, new armor and new kind of way to uh, get gear and stuff, so that'll be fun. But this is the first time where I'm like, man, this is kind of underwhelming, especially with the trajectory Destiny has been on for such a long time at this point. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm still interested in the story. I, I want to see where the story goes because they, they've got a good cadence of like releasing story stuff kind of weekly now. It's like a very nice episodic release. Uh, the new dungeon I haven't done yet, which... Hopefully I'll be able to do by next weekend. Uh, uh, very challenging, I hear. Uh, but the armor is cool. The whole theme is uh, centered around like nightmares and the haunted. And the armor set that you get is like this Grim Reaper style set uh, for the season. Um, it's very cool. And I'm looking forward to doing more in there. But uh, it just might not be my main game as with destiny usually happens to run out of steam by like, I would say like two thirds of the way through the season, but it's already kind of like, I'm kind of over it this season. I don't <laughs> like, I don't like the public of, I don't like the seasonal event at all. So unless we're doing a dungeon or I'm doing my weeklies to kind of finish out my season pass, like I, I don't know how much destiny I'll be playing seriously this season. You're not, you're not feeling this release. No. Oh. no okay uh also like i said i'm starting my ring fit adventure adventure <laughs> tomorrow <laughs> uh but on switch i've been playing i i have i picked up mario 3d world after taking a couple weeks off and let me tell you man i the world i was stuck on i ran through that puppy and beat it first try uh, I have two more levels before I 100% it. Get all the green stars and all of the stamps. Mm -hmm. Two more levels. Uh, and then I'll, I'm going to play Bowser's Fury uh, and see what I think of that. Uh, that's next on my list. I have a lot of Switch games on my list now that I kind of want to like mess with and see what my next game is i thought for a while it was going to be Link's awakening because some people from work are picked up Link's awakening recently that's what i that's what i've been playing uh so maybe i'll do that but also there's just there's a couple other things like astral chain is something that's been on my mind for some reason yeah say uh bayonetta is on my switch now i mean not now but like i i was like running through the games that i had downloaded and i was like I got it. I really got to get back to these games and finish them because I am terrible at finishing games. Turns out, which which is funny. Uh, so when we were talking, you were talking about the Marvel story, um, Ultimate Alliance three started coming up because someone on Twitter was just like this game should have been on other consoles and stuff, and everybody was telling the person, uh, and I think they were just doing it for clout for attention. Mm -hmm. It was just like Nintendo paid for this, so it's that's why it's exclusive. It won't be on mm -hmm. or any other. And I got to thinking, I'm like, dang, I, I'm think I have, I'm halfway through Ultimate Alliance, and I, I think it was just a boss that was beating me. I think I want to go back and finish that game. Yeah, um, I don't know. It didn't really do a lot for me. I thought, it, like, the idea was cool and, you know, but, like, the characters don't really level the way that you want them to, and, like, if you want to use mm -hmm. a different character, you better be doing it Pokemon style, where you're, like, <laughs> switching out your party all the time, and I just didn't want to do that, you know, and, and so I don't know. I might revisit it someday, but today's not that day. Yeah. Man, I wish we could get like a cool, a cool Marvel game. I mean, we got, <laughs> we got Guardians, right? And like everybody likes Spider Man, but like, man, I just, I don't know. There's so many other characters in the Marvel universe that yeah. deserve and, a game. And, and I know we're getting Wolverine on PlayStation Five, which is exciting. Except that I don't I, have a PlayStation I, Five. <laughs> I wonder if they're going to show that for State of Play. I forgot all about that Wolverine game. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see, but. Uh, that's, let me, hold on, hold on it, I can just do this, let me see, there's something else I was playing too, but now I kind of forget what it was, 
do, 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 do. Edward, Edward Barnell. Uh, well, while you're looking, uh, let me jump quickly into what I've been playing. No. Um, okay. So, uh, uh, if, if you did Chronicles or are you did Chronicle uh, Rising, which also everybody were getting the games for Nintendo Switch. Mm-hmm. It took them long enough. Um, I ended up beating that game, and it was good. I, there's more side quests than there is uh, the main quest. There's like really only about three or four levels that that you go and repeat over and over. Um, the a lot of the bosses that you encounter, you have to fight over. There's like one or two bosses that once you beat them, you don't have to revisit them or anything. Uh, it, it's not too hard or anything. Um, there's a lot, lot of dialogue, um, that it's just so skippable that mm. you just do not need it. Just like, oh my goodness, let me get through this <laughs> so I can pr- progress through the game and everything. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a good game. I say wait for a sale. I say if it goes like to seven or eight dollars, it's worth picking up. Well, it's on Game um, Pass if you have Xbox, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah, but I think for people who were getting it, um, like who who decided who wanted to purchase the game and stuff, um, uh, I think they were buying it for a lot of people were buying it for Switch. I don't I don't know if anybody was playing it though. I think maybe one or two people have been playing it on Game Pass that yeah. we know of. Um, but it, it's a fun game. It's not really like wow. It, I think it's something that you could get through in a weekend or you know half of the week and stuff. It's not too long of a game. Um, there was I and I posted this on my Twitter page. Uh, there was there is a bug in the Switch game, uh, and they may patch it up. It, it happens randomly, um, where instead of your character running in the middle of the screen so it can move along with you, uh, you would get close to the end of the screen, and that's when it starts moving. Uh, and so you could get end up getting hit by enemies. Yeah. So uh, I had to leave some areas over and over. I, sometimes I had to cut the game off and then restart it so I could just get past through it uh, and everything. And yeah, it's it's an okay game. Um, Tetris Effect, I, I'm enjoying that game, dude. I love that uh, story. I love the music. That's, once again, just loving the music uh, in it. Yeah. Uh, so I, I I love I love that game. I just when I play it in handheld mode for some reason, I just can't focus on the pieces because there's so many things going on in the background. It, like yeah, it almost hinders my enjoyment of the game. I mean, it doesn't, but like sometimes I'm like, man, I would just wish the pieces were like solid or you know just very very. Uh, various shades of like if you're if you're in like a water (laughs) world like okay well these are different shades of blue that you can see against this dark background water instead of like Mm because like some some of the levels the pieces are see-through and you're like man i just i want to be able to see the pieces yeah i i believe me i hear you on that um still more grace for explosion machine just having uh fun with that Play the game called Freezer Pops. Now, I'm not going to get into it. Uh, I will be talking about this game on our Pride panel next month. Um, I am just going to say that it's questionable content. And a lot of questionable content. Is this the game you were telling me about earlier? Yes. (laughs) Uh, so, um, yeah, just wait to our Pride panel if you want to hear more about that game. I, w- I will talk about that. Um, for Xbox, speaking of, um, I've been, uh, I'm getting ready to, I think I'm going to go through all three of the Tomb Raider games. Um, I installed Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I got to install Rise, and install the first Tomb Raider game, because, um, I kind of want to see uh, beat them all Series X, even though I, I I've beaten them before, of course, on Xbox One. Um, I kind of want to see the upgrades definitely for uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider on L Series X. Uh, I want to play that all through the upgrades. Um, I kind of just feel like we're running through the trilogy after we had that talk about Embracer and Crystal Dynamics. I'm like, man, I just want to go 
do these games because I'm excited for to the next Tomb Raider. I cannot wait for that <clears> game. <throat> mm-hmm. Like th- that's a that's a day one purchase. Yeah, uh, I have been thinking about Rise of the Tomb Raider for a little bit as well uh, because that's <laughs> remember I be- I got all the way to the end and never finished it. <laughs> so. Oh wow. I thought you did. No, I never finished it. And then I played Shadow, and I loved it. Uh, and then we did the... Remember, we were trying to do that book club thing. We played the first yeah. Tomb Raider for that. And it's it's been on my mind for... Uh, it's been on my mind for a little bit. And I just really want to uh, <laughs> play it again, I think. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to get some... Uh, cause I I installed Devil May Cry Five, but I might uninstall that. Uh, I don't think I I need to play that or anything. I was in the mood for an action style game, and I was gonna do DMC, but I'm like, no, I think I'm gonna take that off. Um, cause I I need to inst- uh put back on my I I found out that I took out Outriders, um, cause I think I was playing something else, and I think I'm gonna install Outriders and I install Crisis the Crisis trilogy. On my series X, I'm gonna get through get through that. But like for my next game game, for uh my Switch, uh cartridge base, I think I'm gonna go like I said, Ultimate Alliance three. Um, and then I think I'm gonna finish. I'm gonna jump into Zelda Blade because I need to get ready for that for, um, for July. And I'm gonna pop in Splatoon two. I haven't played Splatoon two. I I have it. I just haven't started up. So I'm gonna need to do the upgrades and everything and just. Have fun with it. Oh, last but not least, I played Rival Surf. I played Rival Surf on the Super Nintendo. Uh, thank God for Blockbuster having <laughs> given you a Friday rental because that's how I played the game. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's still not a good game. It's still it's still so low tier. Uh, Nintendo Life gave it four out of ten. Mm-hmm. I was just like that's about does it. Yeah, um, but that's pretty much what I've been playing. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to um, Forza, not Forza, goodness, um, Fire Emblem Three Hopes and Mario Strikers. I'm definitely looking forward to uh, and then Zeno Play Three and then Splatoon Three, um, and hopefully we get our Nintendo Direct uh, in June. Uh, when I think we're, I, I have a feeling we're getting it after the Xbox One. Uh, yeah, and I think. I mean, we'll I think it's going to be that Tuesday. I bet. Yeah, I and like, yeah, because the I don't know when they're gonna announce it, but I'm just like, man, I, I would be upset if Nintendo on a Tuesday said, yeah, we're doing our uh, we're doing our direct Thursday, uh, while before or after Sony's be like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, I mean, they very well could, but we'll see. I just uh, I think they have a couple more. Uh, things they need to show for this fall and i know nintendo's got a lot this fall already and it's exciting but i think they need that one kind of they need that besides they need that other game to go with pokemon that it just needs to be there saying yeah because i mean don't get me wrong uh pokemon is a huge seller and that's probably all they need but there's some people that like you know, aren't that into Pokemon and need something, want something else to look forward to this fall. Yeah. Like, let's see what Metro Prime 4 does. Let's see. Um, Events Wars. Cause I think those are only two that we need to feel, feel, uh, and Mario Rabbids. Uh, we need that date and everything. And I think if we, because the Ubisoft one may be before Nintendo's, uh, I think we'll probably see it in their presentation, um, the release date. I'd be surprised if it's not there because of Nintendo. That would be that would be so that would be telling. Be like, okay, Nintendo's really serious about this game, so they want it in their direct. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we I think what we need something for August and December, August, October, and December. We need uh, something just for final dates for games. From Nintendo, yeah. Um, so, well, with that, everybody, that's gonna be it for Nintendo Power Block. Uh, you guys can find me on uh, Twitter at that Brecher Code, and on Instagram, uh, you can check out Nintendo Expansion Pass 
on bosspitch.net and our YouTube page. And you can get it earlier if you become a portrait, p- Patreon supporter. <laughs> and also join us on our Discord. Uh, we would love to talk to you guys all about video games, snacks, um, board games, whatever you would like, love to talk about. We would love to have fun with you guys. Uh, Corey, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me at I am Corey and HD on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, you can find me hosting the Boss Rush podcast as well as various other things here on the Boss Rush Network. Uh, I just want to say again, everybody, um, just make sure you appreciate the ones that you love because you never know what's going to happen. And uh, it's it's always good to to be that way and show everybody that you care for them and you love them and you know you know mm-hmm. so uh, yeah yeah well with that everybody we'll see you next time on the to the pod block bye everybody Woo-hoo! goodbye.